Our next reflex is going to be called a withdraw reflex or a flexor reflex. This is going to allow us to withdraw a limb from a painful or a dangerous situation. So when we put our hand on a tack in our generalized reflex arc, that was a demonstration of a flexor reflex. This action is more complicated than a simple knee jerk and so it requires more neurons and it is therefore polysynaptic. So we're going to see the use of multiple interneurons here. This reflex is also ipsilateral, meaning our stimulus and our movement, our outcome, is going to be on the same side of the spinal cord. And we are going to involve a parallel after discharge circuit to prolong the response until the brain can get involved. Okay, so let's take a look at our steps. We are going to receive a painful stimulus that travels up to our posterior gray horn where our sensory neuron synapses to an interneuron. In our spinal cord, our sensory neuron is going to send an EPSP to an interneuron in the posterior gray horn. Remember, an EPSP is an excitatory postsynaptic potential, and it generally elicits an action potential in the postsynaptic cell. So our interneuron is then going to send an EPSP to our flexors, but at the same time, we are going to send an EPSP to a second interneuron. Interneuron 2 is then going to send an IPSP to our extensors. By sending an IPSP to our extensors, we are not going to allow our extensors to function while we are going to contract our flexors and that pulls our hand away from our painful stimulus. So think about it. If we contracted our extensors at the same time as we contracted our flexors, our arm wouldn't move and we would be stuck on this painful stimulus. But by turning our extensors off, that allows our flexors to work and actually remove our hand from the painful stimulus. If you have any questions regarding a withdrawal or a flexor reflex, please do not hesitate to contact your instructor.